What's going on guys, Justin here, and welcome back to our ninth math major example video following our course on differential equations. Now today's example video is going to be on second order linear differential equations, specifically homogeneous ones. So let's get into our definitions. So let's first look at what types of uh, equations we're gonna be dealing with here. So let's suppose P and Q are continuous on an interval A, B. Let Y1 and Y2 be solutions of the following linear second order homogeneous equation on the interval A, B. We will define the Ronskian, which will denote W of of x of the solution set y1 y2 as w equals y1 y2 prime minus y1 prime y2 which can also be expressed as taking the determinant of that matrix and then we have another formula for calculating the Ronskian. we have Abel's formula so let x not be any point on the open interval a b then the Ronskian is equal to w evaluated at x naught times e to the power of the negative integral from x naught to x of p of t dt, where p of t is the coefficient of the y prime term from the above equation, with x strictly uh, less than b and strictly greater than a. And lastly, this is a really important theorem, we have that the following are equivalent. The general solution of that equation above on a b is y equals c1 y1 plus c2 y2. We have that the solution set y1 y2 is a fundamental set of solutions of that equation on a and b. We have the solution set y1, y2 is linearly independent on AB. We have the Ronskian is non-zero at some point in AB, and the Ronskian is non-zero at all points in AB. So this is a special case where if the Ronskian is non-zero at some point on the interval, it's non-zero at all points in the interval. So now we've established our basis for the problems we're going to be getting into, so let's go ahead and do the first problem. Number one says, find the Ronskian of a given set y1, y2 of solutions of the differential equation y double prime plus 3 times the quantity x squared plus 1 times y prime minus 2y equals 0. We have that the Ronskian evaluated at pi is equal to 0. So that w evaluated at pi is a big hint that tells us we will be using Abel's formula. So I'll go ahead and put that on the screen now. Great, so there's our formula, and we have all the pieces we need to calculate our Ronskian here. We have our uh, W evaluated at our X naught, which in this case is pi, and we have our P, which is what I've underlined in blue here. It's the coefficient of that Y prime term. So let's go ahead and plug this into our equation. So once we set this up, we will have W evaluated at pi times E to the power of the negative integral from pi to X of p of t, but p of t is 3 times t squared plus 1 dt. But we know that w evaluated at pi is equal to 0, so we will just have 0 times e to some power. This e doesn't actually matter. Uh, w of x is equal to 0 in this case. So hopefully that example kind of showed you how to set up a problem like this and what to look for when you're going to be calculating the Ronskian using Abel's formula. So let's go ahead and get into our second problem. So number two says, find the Ronskian of a given set uh, y1, y2 of the solutions of x squared y double prime plus x y prime plus the quantity x squared minus v squared y equals zero. We have the condition w of one is equal to one. So once again, this is a big hint that we are going to be using Abel's formula here. But for this problem, we will actually have to go through with the calculation. So let's start by dividing the equation through by this x squared here so we can get y double prime all alone in front. So we'll have y double prime plus one over x y plus the quantity x squared minus v squared over x squared times y is equal to zero. Now, once again, this is our p of x, so we'll be using it for our antiderivative calculation. So let's just go ahead and do that separately before plugging into Abel's formula. So we have negative the integral from one to x of dt over t. And that's of course going to be equal to negative the natural log of t. And we can bring that negative in. So it'll be the natural log of t to the negative first power. And then we have to do our substitution from one to x, but that will just give us the natural log of x to the negative first power as our final result for that integral. So using uh, Abel's formula here, we're gonna get that w of x is equal to w of one, which we know is just one. So one times e to the power of this integral, which we found out to be the natural log of x to the negative first power. So e to the power of the natural log of x to the negative one. And this e and natural log will cancel out, which will give us simply one over x as our final answer for this Ronskian here. So let's go ahead and get into our next example where we will use the Ronskian formula. So for number three, we have find the Ronskian of the set e to the x and e to the negative x. 
So this e to the x and e to the negative x is a set of solutions to some unknown uh, differential equation, but we can calculate the Ronskian with just these two y's, as the only thing we need for the Ronskian formula are those two solutions. So if you're asked to find the Ronskian and you're given a solution set, that is your hint to use the Ronskian formula. So let me go ahead and write out the Ronskian formula for you. We have w of x is equal to the determinant of the matrix y1, y2, and y1 prime, y2 prime. So let's take our derivatives and then we can plug those values into that matrix there. So obviously uh, the derivative with respect to x of e to the x is just equal to e to the x. And the derivative with respect to x of e to the negative x is equal to negative e to the negative x, which gives us the following matrix. We'll have the determinant of e to the x e to the negative x, e to the x, and negative e to the negative x. And evaluating that determinant is rather easy. We will have e to the x times negative e to the negative x, and that will be minus e to the negative x times e to the x, which is of course just equal to negative two. And that finishes this problem off. So let's go ahead and get into our fourth example where we will use the Ronskian formula to calculate a Ronskian from a set of solutions with three entries. So number four says, find the Ronskian of the set x, x squared, x cubed, and is the solution set linearly dependent? So let's go ahead and find the Ronskian first as we can use the information to determine if the solution set is linearly dependent or not. So we already know the Ronskian formula and how we're gonna calculate this. We have W of X is going to be equal to the determinant of the matrix here, but this matrix will actually be a three by three matrix. So we'll have X, X squared and X cubed. So we just need to take derivatives down these columns. So this will be one and zero, two X and two, 3x squared and 6x. And then we need to take the determinant of that and we'll do that by cofactor expansion. So let's go ahead and do the first column. We will have x times 2x times 6x minus 3x squared times two. And then doing the second column, we'll have minus x squared times one times 6x. And that second term will contribute nothing. And then we'll lastly, we'll have plus x cubed times one times two, and that last term will also contribute nothing. So let's go ahead and combine like terms and we can see what will happen. So we can see that this right here is going to contribute a six X squared, and the rest is fairly simple to calculate. So the first part will contribute a six X cubed. The second part will contribute a minus six X cubed. So those will cancel outright, which will leave us with two X cubed for our Ronskian. So now the question is, is this solution set linearly dependent or linearly independent? So in order to answer this question, we're going to need to refer back to the theorem that I showed earlier in the definitions where we stated the following are equivalent. Most notably, we're gonna to wanna to hone in on the fact that the Ronskian is non-zero at some point in AB if and only if the solution set is linearly independent on AB. So we have our Ronskian now 2x cubed and our interval of validity for this solution set is of course negative infinity to infinity as we don't have any problems with x, x squared or x cubed which means that all we need to do is find a value on this interval where the Ronskian is non-zero. And of course that's pretty trivial to prove. So let's just let X equal three, in which case the Ronskian evaluated at three will be of course equal to 54, which is not equal to zero. This implies that the solution set X, X squared and X cubed are in fact linearly independent. So I don't think any of those problems were too hard, but hopefully they were helpful in some way. And I think that's a good place to stop.